Hi, good afternoon. This is Bill Palm recording in uh, the Pacific Northwest. This is the first in a series of uh, demonstrations, little mini video clips on watercolor sketching outdoors. Uh, there'll be several different clips to illustrate four steps in the procedure that I use all the time that works well for me. I'll be working in the Aquabee Super Deluxe Sketchbook uh, made by the B Paper Company. I have several things to say which I will say uh, during each clip which will cover each of the four steps and you can also read uh, much more about this on my blog at uh, BillPalmWatercolor.com B-I-L-L-P-O-L-M plus watercolor all one big word dot com so let's get started with step one so here we are step one and when you're out on a location where you want to sketch it's a good idea to take your time find a scene that attracts you first off and then walk around a little bit and find the best view that you can or one that you like the most I like to uh, sketch a scene in pencil for starters and this series of video clips on uh, watercolor sketching outdoors I'm taking from a sketch that I did last July at Sunset Bay in Southern Oregon this one right here I have duplicated my drawing my sketch there four times this makes it go faster when we're uh, explaining and videotaping <clears throat> so you don't have to sit there and wait for me to draw all the time so this is pencil this is pen and ink and these are the pen and ink other drawings that I'm going to do two stages of watercolor sketching in so here and I'll, I'll point to this because it's easier to see on the camera and the video I think about composition when I'm doing my pencil drawing and when I'm doing my ink drawing too as well. I like to keep things unequally spaced, like this is a different size than this and the spaces between these uh, earth formations, these cliff areas are different. The spaces between the waves are different. The lines in the surf are different distances and I try to make sure that none of them go right out at a corner, any of the lines in any portion. In other words, I think about my composition as I'm drawing in pencil and as I'm uh, finishing in ink. So now on to step two. So in uh, step two I add pen and ink to my drawing and make sure that you if you're gonna watercolor these things make sure it's waterproof good waterproof ink. I use Noodler's ink uh, also called bulletproof ink for my sketching. Now, why do I do pencil and then pen and ink? Pencil gives me a lot of flexibility. I can change anything I want. If I use a, one of those nice soft white erasers, I can erase anything I want on this paper without damaging it. And so I, I, it helps me to relax quite a bit when I'm uh, working in pencil up here. But I move to pen and ink next because it gives me a chance to correct anything that I don't like up here. I can move things a little bit and I can change them and when I'm done I have a waterproof pen and ink drawing that I can watercolor over freely anytime I want. The pen and ink also has a way, uh, it's kind of psychological, but it has a way of nailing the drawing for me. It gives me a structure that I can paint over and apply my paint very freely. I can get a little adventuresome, a little playful, just uh, try new things, whatever I want to do when I get to the watercolor stage. So I like to do the pen and ink uh, when I'm out sketching. Plus, later on, when I want to, uh, if I want to say scan this or photograph this or just use it as a reference for a larger painting, it's easy for me to where I uh, to see where I have my original lines because they're nice and dark and they come through and shine through the watercolor that I add. So, on to step three. Let me know when you're ready. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead. 
Okay, here we are at step three, and I'm going to lay in the initial watercolor washes. And what I want to do first is spray my watercolors. These are uh, Chief Joe's American Journey watercolors, and they, they melt fairly quickly. It's a little teeny spray bottle comes in handy in the field. <clears throat> so, what we want to do is, uh, as I recall, that sky out there that day was uh, a little bit overcast, really kind of a pretty sky. So I start with a little bit of um, ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna here like this. What we're going to do is uh, get a little wet and wet technique. So I'm going to come across that a little bit of water here, wetting it so I can get the effect that I want that. Then I'll lay in a little bit of the sky like this. It's going to be basically a overcast rainy sky. Just leave that alone. Now what I'm aiming for here is I'm trying to fill in basically the uh, general areas of the painting. Like here we have some green pine-like trees. Up here on the left. Down here we have sand, here we have ocean. So I'm laying the basic colors starting off uh, right away. Now, while this is wet up here, I simply want to go to another area of the painting and paint there. We're giving this a chance to dry up here. So right now I'm going to come in here and paint uh, the sand area using a nice little flat brush. Very handy because it moves a lot of paint fairly quickly. Then, let's get it a little bit darker here. Like that. Doing that. While I'm messing around with that, I might as well go up here and get in some of these cliff areas. So, what I want to do is come in here like this. Now I'm going to, as I'm painting, I'm picking up other colors to vary the color as I move along. This little piece here I got a little too low, so I just pull that off with a, a paper towel. You can even mix in a little of my sky color there as I go across. So I'm varying the colors. I can come in here with a different ground. This is burnt sienna with a little ultramarine blue coming in here with uh, burnt umber. Like that. Oop. Might even want to add a little orange for flavor. There. I got the start on that. While I'm doing it, let's come over here and get these guys going. Colors get a little thin, so I come in and pull in a little more color. Not quite enough yet. Something like this. Okay. Still not dry up here, so I'm not going to go up into the trees 
just yet. Using my paper towel to clean my palette off real quick. So I'm going to go in and uh, this time I'm going to pick up some, let's see, sap green and a little bit of uh, thylo blue. And very important, add a touch of red to dull it down so it looks like actual sea color. Adding more water to make it thin because I don't want it to be too dark at this stage. So I can come in and put some darker ways in later. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do now is I'm going to paint this area right here down to the top of this crashing wave foam. And we'll do it like this. myself to leave some white areas as I'm doing this for later. You'll find that there's usually some foam around the edges of these cliffs as they come down. The water hits it and stirs up a little foam. There. So I got basically my background sea color, my underpainting in there, and I'll come in later and do a little more with it. <clears throat> okay, that's starting to get pretty dry right up here. So ideally in, in a watercolor you paint from back to front, the sky is the furthest back, you paint that first, and then top to bottom and everything goes right, but practically you move around because you need to wait for it to dry. Cleaning my palette one more time. Switching to my nice pointed Da Vinci Maestro brush. Going to take off and start doing the trees. So I'm mixing some uh, sap green, adding to one side of the puddle a little Thylo blue to cool it down. Sap green is kind of a warm color. Putting some ultramarine blue down here to cool it down in a, in a slightly different way. Adding some bright yellow in another spot. So I have actually about four different little pools that are kind of mixing together here all at once. Put a little red up here. So I've got my colors going ahead of time. So as I move across, I don't have to be mixing all the time. I can just uh, dip in those other colors. Now, this is uh, pine trees, and they come down to an area of kind of like bushy greens down in here. So I come up here. Start filling it in. This is where having a nice point on your brush helps. Helps you hit it the way you want to. If I'm coming in with a quite a bit lighter color, then I rinse my brush out in the water, hit the sponge to take most of the water out of it. Come down with a variation on that. And also add a touch of red up there for good variety. So I'm working it, working my colors, varying my colors as I go, mixing them on the paper. I do that by adding in different colors to the wet color that's already there. come in later and define those much better, those trees. 